Hi friends, David here from Learn Christmas Lighting. And today we're gonna to talk about installing FPP, the Falcon Player. Now, this is gonna be applicable to you if you're not familiar with it. If you're running a Culp controller, um, if you're running a Raspberry Pi device or a BeagleBone device uh, that's gonna run FPP to run your show, and either A, you don't have it installed yet, you just got the device, it's blank, you have no SD card, or B, um, you're wanting to upgrade to a new major version. So right now, for example, we're in FPP version 6.3. Okay, if they put out a 6.4, you can in place, you know, hit the button, download the update if you're on the internet, and, and do that inside of the software. But the major versions still require you to start from scratch, essentially. Um, so when we get version 7, it will most likely require you to do this process. Now, there's been some things in the past year or two that have made this process even easier than before, and I'm going to run you through it. So historically, what you would do, and, and this is still part of it, is reach into your desk drawer and find a SD card in order to install FPP on it. I will do that in a minute because... I don't have any in my drawer right now. Uh, number two, you would go and Google, I would usually search web search, uh, FPP download, and you would land at this page, the FPP releases page. Now this is 7.0 alpha, um, that's a pre-release, I don't recommend using that uh, for uh, an actual show, but if you wanna test or whatnot, that is totally cool. So you can totally go ahead um, and grab it from here. This is the alpha version of pre-release, but you'd scroll down, you'd find 6.3, the latest, and you'd be ready to rock and roll. Um, then you would download this program called Bellina Etcher. You would etch it to an SD card and then be good to go. Um, and that's still the process. And, and if you're using um, a BeagleBone based uh, deal, but if you're using a Pi based system, you can actually get the Raspberry Pi um, imager. So you just literally search, you know, Raspberry Pi Imager. Um, we can link to this below as well. It's at raspberrypi.com slash software. You can download this, and I'm going to show you how easy it is to install with that. And then we'll go and, and we'll do it the old way, um, because if you're using a BeagleBone-based device, um, you do need to go and download the bbbimage.zip. Okay, so fppv 63bb or dash bbb.image.zip. I'll go ahead and download that. I will grab my SD card, and then let's go ahead and launch the Raspberry Pi imager, and you'll see how easy this is. All right, so I've got my SD card, fresh SD card, or it could be one that already had an OS on it, and you're just wiping it over. So plug that into my SD card reader. Um, by the way, if you do end up having any errors, like it doesn't install right, it errors out something, Oftentimes, I've found that to be um, to follow the SD card reader or USB port on your computer. So you can always try a different SD card reader if it fails, try a different USB port, what have you. Um, but it's really simple as pulling up this Raspberry Pi imager, choose your OS, scroll down to other general purpose OS. Nope. <laughs> other, uh, where is it? media player other specific image os i believe that's the one where they hide it now yep where it is and now it says falcon player fpp and oops i clicked the link what i meant to do is just click the arrow it's going to show you the latest version and then choose storage so here it's going to show you any sd cards or usb drives that are plugged in choose the sd card that you want and then you hit right it tells you yep you're gonna erase all your stuff so you know don't put, don't do something you want to. Apologies for Dropbox pulling things up every minute of the day. And then it goes ahead and it, it does its thing. Boom. You know, it's, it's going to go ahead and, and uh, write it up here. So we'll just uh, twiddle our fingers for a minute and let it go. Do, 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 do. Meanwhile, I will find an SD card for my Beagle Bone in a minute that I'm going to do. All right, so what you may have seen there, if we fast forwarded through it or if we just skipped it, I'm not sure what we're gonna do. Um, it went through, there's a stage of writing, zero to 100%, verifying zero to 100%. Then you get this, hey, you're good to go, pull it out. And then you're ready to go ahead and stick this in your FPP device and start it up. We'll get to that in a minute. Now, if you are doing a BeagleBone based system, uh, you'll still use the old method, uh, which is fine. 
you download a program. So you go to the FPP download page, as we mentioned. You download the latest stable version uh, if you want, or go back a version or two if you want. Um, usually the latest version's fine. Um, I just recommend, you know, don't do this on November 31st. Uh, usually they try to keep it, make sure it's really stable around that time of year because that's when everybody's starting their shows. But, you know, do it in September, test it, make sure it's good, um, make sure it's stable for you. But you download that, and then we're going to go ahead and we'll download a program called Balina Etcher. It's called Etcher by this pro company, Balina. The site looks like this right now. And in this program, similar process, just a couple more steps. You go flash from file, you go and grab that file. Again, uh, the BBB version file is for those beagle bones. If you're using this version on a Pi, you want to grab the, the Pi file, which would be this one, the pi.image.zip. And oops, that's not the program. That is, uh, where are we? There's the Etcher program. <laughs> And uh, so we select that one, select target. You just go ahead and, and choose your, who my SD card did not show up. There it is. It wasn't quite in the reader, right? And hit flash. It's going to be a really similar process here. Um, you may hit yes on some things and then you go ahead and, oh, interesting. They have a enter pro device, but they'll go ahead. There'll be a few steps of decompressing, writing, verifying. Uh, it should spit out a success message. Again, like I mentioned before, the spots I see people have issues at this step are if it does fail, um, try a different USB port on your computer, try a different SD card reader. Sometimes they just don't get along. Um, it, it seems like it's, I, there, there doesn't really seem to be a rhyme or reason to it. Um, that's just how it rolls. Okay, so that'll finish, that'll be done. We're gonna ignore that right now. And we're gonna go ahead and grab this SD card. Let me go stick it in my FPP device and start it up and show you what that process looks like upon startup. All right, so in this case, I've actually booted it up in a device that um, is just a regular Raspberry Pi. It does not have a screen, okay? Um, so because of that, it's not gonna show me IP address information or anything like that. Now, once it boots up, there are two ways to get a hold of it. Uh, and this can be a tricky one. Okay, so that finished flashing. Um, if you are on a pocket beagle based device, if you only have wireless connected, um, I generally recommend just with some of the issues we've had over the past years, um, going with a BeagleBone based device or a Raspberry Pi that, that has a network port. Um, because sometimes the USB to network, the wireless adapters have had issues um, out of the box and you can't connect to them. And sometimes the USB tethering method uh, really doesn't work for people. I've had a lot of trouble with that personally, um, as well as a lot of our students. So I recommend getting a device that has a network port on it. You can always do a wireless adapter as well on that device, um, but certainly um, getting one with the network port just helps a lot in the troubleshooting and setup stage. Um, that being said, that's also why I like uh, the newer controllers like the Matos Dragon. I'm a huge fan of those because they're just configured out of the box with Wi-Fi and wired, ready to roll. Okay, so all that to say, when it boots up, if you're wireless only, you should be able to connect to a network here in your networks here. Um, you see we've got our Matos Dragon plugged in, uh, but you should be able to connect to a network here that says uh, Falcon and the password is Christmas, okay? Um, and and if you're only wireless, you should be able to get that. Now, as noted in more recent versions of FPP and different wireless adapters, it doesn't always work, it doesn't always show up. Um, the easiest, fastest, best way to get in contact with a new device is to plug it in on your same network as your computer, go ahead and launch X Lights, and then we're just gonna go to the FPP Connect section. Uh, if you haven't done this before, I'll show you how it works right now. So yeah, we're plugged in. And we go to Tools, FPP Connect. And then it found one at 192.168.0.196. And I think that's the right one because I always have multiple. Yep. And so I can click on that link right there. It shows me I'm in version 6.3. Uh, and so now 
I hit that link, it opens in a web browser. It did that in another window, but I'm dragging it over for you. And it's gonna walk you through the initial setup. This is gonna be the same if you're on a Pi or a Beagle Bone, okay? Um, and just to check, for example, it still hasn't shown up on wireless, even though there's a wireless adapter uh, that I know is compatible attached. And that's been a thing um, out of the box with these. And so that's why I definitely recommend going with, with something that has that wired network port or just going with a controller that, that pre-configured out of the box. So what you do here is you can set it to player or remote mode, give it a name uh, that typically I name it the name of the controller that it's feeding or something like that, okay? I was going to call it FPP test so I can show you guys something in a minute. Then go ahead and there's a couple quick things you need to do. Is one, it's asking you if you have a Pi hat or cape, a, a, a controller that's mounted directly to the Pi. I don't. Where in the world are you? Um, look up location is great. Look up time zone is great. Boom. So it finds your latitude, longitude, and location if you're on the internet. Um, and then you do have to now under this UI password, OS password, you have to choose an option. So I usually just choose uh, default and disabled. Um, again, you know, if you, it's, this is the kind of thing, having passwords on these things, um, especially the user interface is really only if it's going to be on a network that public traffic's on. Um, and for most people show, that's just not how it's going to be. Um, then we'll hit finish setup. We get this uh, unused space, uh, notice that comes up. So go to storage settings, grow file system. This allows you to use your full SD card to store stuff. And then it says, please reboot at the end. It obviously had already said that based on uh, me changing the name of the device. So we'll hit reboot. We'll hit okay. And now we're pretty much ready to go. Um, the one thing we did is of course we can always find it. You're always going to be able to find it right in your network settings. Um, by going to the FPP connect, you know, it'll go out, it'll find them and it'll tell you that IP address. Um, you can also type into your address bar once it does reboot. Let's see if it's there. Once it does reboot, instead of the IP address, you'll be able to just go to HTTP colon slash slash FPP. And this one is FPP test because that's what I named this one. You see now it's back up. We're good to go. Um, it, it will uh, mention a few more things to you that we'll go through here. These are kind of the more optionals are um, enabling anonymous collections of statistics to help improve FPP. I recommend doing that. Um, anytime you see that you change a setting and you have to restart the FPP D, that is actually a very fast process. Um, it's not a full restart like what we just did. Um, and then in terms of wireless, as you can see, the wireless still doesn't work. Um, it's still not in my Windows networks. It's still not up here. So for that, we'll go here to network. And here it's going to show our wireless adapters. Now this Pi actually does have one built in. And, uh, and it would be the tethering option. If no connection, it should be starting up a network that you can connect to. Um, on your networks. It hasn't. So what I would try is the other one, the WLAN one, and then I should be able to get that going or switching it off. Um, actually it's on if no connection right now. And I believe that means that because I'm connected wired, that's not showing up. So if I hit enabled, I'll get a prompt about rebooting, we'll do a full reboot. And then I believe we'll see it in our network. So let's find out real quick. We'll let it reboot. Um, while we're here, guys, thanks so much for watching. As always, if you haven't subscribed here, uh, do so now. If you're new to this hobby, hop over to learnchristmaslighting.com. I have a free guide I want to get into your hands. The four things I really wish I knew before I began in this hobby and get that there. And if you need a place to buy your pixels, extensions, controllers, DMX Moving Heads. Um, we are your place here at Learn Christmas Lighting Store. Uh, we've got them at learnchristmaslightingstore.com and we would love to help you out. We only carry the best stuff, but at really reasonable prices. So if that sounds good, um, please do join us in the links below or on the end screen. Um, for now, I have turned on tethering. Let's just see really quick. Um, it's still not showing up, so I would probably try the other wireless adapter. I, I'm the first to admit that 
sometimes it's just about trying things and, and then it works one of these times. It, it can be kind of annoying, um, but ultimately you do want to get wireless working. So just give it a hot minute here. I want to get this working for you today. It was working. <laughs> so goes this hobby sometimes. Doo -doo -doo. So we'll let it restart here. Boom, it's restarted. Check our networks. No, a whole bunch of nothing. Unless it's this hidden network, but it shouldn't be. So password by default, as we know it is Christmas, capital C, as it should be. Don't think it's that one. Nope. Um, so for whatever reason, um, tethering doesn't seem to be working right. And so that's why I've got it plugged in on my network. Uh, you can also set it in here. It sees my, my uh, wireless adapters here. And you can set either wireless adapter, the internal one or a USB one, uh, to connect to your network. Uh, and often we do that. But that's all we're doing for today. Again, check out the links. Uh, we are your place to get the stuff you need to make an amazing show. And we would love to help you. And we would love to help you get the step-by-step -step to do that in our course as well over at the Lauren Christmas Lighting Academy. Check all of that out below. And we'll see you guys in our next video. Thanks.